use without cryptocurrencies. <laughs> it's like, so you're trying to do something. Oh yeah. They, they, they're, they're minting their own coins now, you know? So I'm telling you that this stuff is not going anywhere. It's, it's better to adapt and evolve instead of die out and, you know, just get left behind. Dissolve. Yep. Yeah. Dissolve. Right. So that was number two, copywriting. Number three, video production. Now, video protect video production is one of the most sought after uh skills. Hold on right quick. I'm sorry. My wife just texts me. <coughs> no interruption, sir. No, no. <laughs> o- only when the wifey texts me. <laughs> what well, wife is the most important she is the executive producer of this show without her blessing none of this would happen <laughs> you know how it is steve <laughs> wife i think all three of us know huh? yeah, and we, yeah 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 i know <laughs> well we all three three of us know see heather is nice though heather is real cool but it's just like <laughs> you know when wife be like yes you you are part and you you may go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See, Steve's in the shed right now. Nah, it's not. It's because his studio, <laughs> his studio is being built, and Steve is like, Steve, out of all of us, huh? It's almost done. It's almost there. Yeah, Steve actually has a actual place me and david are the ones who are like out in the wild doing our thing like as you can see my open environment behind me my son was over here dancing over this shoulder right here a few minutes ago you know <laughs> so hey but yes video back to video editing uh steve do you have any um uh, skill in video editing sir I don't know shit about video editing. No, actually, I do. We did. I did a little bit of like splicing and stuff like that, like setting, uh, you know, different stills to music. Like nothing crazy, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I knew I did enough of it to know I don't want to do it. Yeah, you hear that, folks? Steve is working with Grandpa Technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> splicing and steals. One <laughs> years ago, yeah. Yeah. Nah, you, 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 there is splicing. Splicing is still here, but it's pretty much all digital now, right? And this is something that more than likely AI will definitely uh, take on. I mean, there is already AI assistant in um, video editing. I use a program called uh, Filmora, which I use to uh, edit our videos here. And, um, you know, with Filmora, you can do all sorts of things, man. You can do speed ramping, keyframing. It, it's, it's a very, very stable program to use. Uh, I've used DaVinci Resolve. Uh, that was my go-to program. But for speed and time, I use one, dish, well, well, Filmora. And here's the reason. So DaVinci Resolve is a free program and you can create anything but you have to build it from scratch you literally got to build it from the ground up to do whatever it is you want to do the reason why i use filmora is because half of those functions that i need are already built into the program so it's just a point click done point click go you know i don't have to build it from the ground up if i want to do a transition scene Everything is already there. I just pick one of the ones to do for speed and time. Film more. You can't beat it. Now, when I get a Mac, I might switch out to something else. But for right now, film more is my 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 go to. So and also, you know, um, what is it? What's the one that you use, Dave? Final uh, Cut Pro. Uh, Final Cut Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Dave's a Mac. That's on a Mac. Yeah. Dave's a. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say Dave is a Mac user. He's he's I use it all. I don't know. I don't know what to call you. I, I would call you a PC whore. <laughs> he just goes to either side, you know. That's right. <laughs> um what is it? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Da Vinci is at its best as like raw editor. You can like do whatever you want and it's gonna be your unique signature on mm-hmm. how you do stuff. Mm-hmm. 
And then you have uh, Final Cut Pro, which is kind of like right in the middle of Da Vinci, da Vinci and Tomora, where if you want to throw in effects, all you have to do is just bl- buy these plugins mm-hmm. that are already have the effects, and you can just load them in there. I don't know how it works with DaVinci. DaVinci, you can build that bad boy from the ground up. I mean, I think you can download stuff from like GitHub or places of that nature where somebody has actually created a plugin or an effect. I Trans- believe so, yeah. but I have not touched DaVinci Resolve. Oh, since I did that video for for your boy Steve, your uh your friend on Facebook, when I spliced together their music with the Naruto. Oh, for the music video, yeah, 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 man, I love that thing, man. For that, yeah, I can't. Yeah, right. It can. It can. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, hey, I was like, man, these guys were awesome. <laughs> And it's funny because when I heard the song, because Steve, we, we was working at the time, and Steve was like, yo, man, you got to listen to the song. And I was like, that sounds like an anime intro. And he was like, yeah, it does. And I was like, yeah. So I took it, and at the time, Naruto, or no, it was Baroto, they had this horrible, horrible intro for that anime. Like, it was one of those ones that I just, like, skipped straight through to that, to the actual start of the video because i couldn't stand their intro i took it and remixed it using his buddy's music and it actually came out great and then he sent it to his buddy and his buddy was like we actually created this you know in like uh anime was their their uh thought process when they created that song so it, it definitely translated through because somebody he didn't even know they existed was like this feels like anime music <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so video editing is one thing you could definitely look into in 2023 eventually i will be teaching video editing to uh people in my facebook group that uh, i'll be starting on facebook so if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm eventually start showing people the basics of using video editing and how you can just like with no skill, no experience, just turn on this program, do what you need to do and not feel afraid of it. So there's that. And uh, what is it? Number four. Huh. I couldn't even read my own handwriting. (laughs) Well, content marketing skills. What is that? Anybody? Content Content marketing skills. skills, I have no idea. Content marketing skills. I don't know. It's content marketing skills. You're marketing your content. There you go, Steve. Steve got it. Ding, ding, ding. Steve wins. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is the <laughs> stuff that I need you guys to do with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I asked that question. <laughs> so content marketing, uh, in, in, in the easiest form to describe it is actually marketing your content. So once we create videos here on, uh, for our channel, we make little short video forms of it. Uh, you want to be able to market those skills to different platforms. You you want to use you want to leverage platforms like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, uh, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels. You want to be able to put content in such a good way that it causes people to pay attention to the content. Uh, when we first started out, it was Dave and I, and you know, Dave had a little brain fart on camera. So I took that brain fart, added some, um, some clever video editing to it. And that was a part of my content marketing that I had done to kind of get viewers back to the channel. And you could do it in a number of ways. I'm, I'm only, just scratching the surface of doing content marketing, but this is definitely a skill you want to take advantage of and look into. Now, can chat GPT three do it? It's very possible, or it can give you directions on how to do it. Right. Uh, you can actually ask it a question and how this 
this chatbot works. And the reason why I'm going back to this is because overall it's going to, in my opinion, replace Google. And so it, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> because all of the information that's ever been supplied up until 2022, this is what this uh, chat can actually go through. It will take that information instead of just, Hey, go here for this, go here for this. And you do doing the compiling. It does the compiling for you and spits it out in a short, simple form that you can read, even giving you directions. So if you're not good at content marketing, you can actually get a idea of how to do it by asking chat to do so. As a matter of fact, I think before we, uh, before we end this video, we're probably going to have to, uh, do something, you know, what? nothing like, Wait, hold on. go ahead, Dave. Um, about that, where you say that you think, but Google might be phased out a little bit on that search engine part. Huh? Is that what you were talking about? How Google might be phased out on the search en engine aspect? Well, and then use. I, 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 I can definitely see them working together. I don't think it'll yeah, phase it out. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I I think all the crap that's going on with Elon and Google talking about, you know, he's gonna. Uh, I guess Google's gonna be using their satellites. Maybe that's another way for them to still get money, and maybe. I don't know. Slowly let go of the Google search engine Maybe aspect. Google will buy this because you know what happens. These large companies they go and they buy out these budding technology. Uh, you know they'll, they'll probably buy out the most advanced chat and integrate it into Google, and that's what it'll become. Oh. It'll be Google yeah, I didn't chat. Think about that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that. That's that's quite interesting. I mean, you, you more know. than likely, that's usually what happens. They can, you know, the. the Budding technology company gets bought out by the big company, and you know, sometimes they don't. Like look at look at ByteDance. You know, they I mean, but they were their own Chinese thing. You know, but like uh, they they did it. You know, they came out and they fucking did it. You know, now they're fucking huge, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Well, they ain't gonna be around too much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knows? You know, uh, well, they 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 starting to realize, like, hey, wait a minute, they are spying on people. <laughs> they are. <laughs> it's like wait. they are. They all are. But we consent to it. When you when yeah. you uh, start, you create a thing, oh yeah, my my data is not my data anymore. Yeah, nah, yeah. And, and that's true. I mean, they all spy on us. They it's just that do. I prefer domestic spying. <laughs> I trust the U.S. government a lot more than I trust the Chinese government. <laughs> you know what? If I had to choose, bro, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, go ahead, U.S. government. Do what you do. I, I, you know, I get me, it. I've been here they, all my life. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here all my life. I understand. You know, there, I mean, they have like this this whole system, this, uh, what, what do you call that system they have? Uh, this merit system. So if you yeah. jaywalk across the street, and yeah, your social credit. Your social credit. Yeah. And now you go to the airport to go get on a flight. I'm sorry, you can't get on this flight because you did that. You know what? I'm good my entire life not ever having to deal with something like that. So yeah. 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 Yep. You, you can miss me with that. <laughs> oh yeah, guys. Look at that. Wonderful food. What is that? Oh, oh, he got his sish kebab and rice. Uh, right. Yes, just see your smiling face. Yeah, yeah right. Dave's happy. <laughs> yeah, bros. I think I'm gonna step out. It's fucking 32 degrees. Uh, and see, I'm fucking free. He, he said he was good. <laughs> he said he was good. <laughs> you liar. His bolitas are freezing. Yeah, I know. Wait, how many more questions do we have? Uh, we got uh, that was number four. Oh got, my god, we have 34 questions. Yeah. We're going to be here for Wait a minute. We got 46 <laughs> we got 46 minutes in. Uh if we if you guys want to, man, we can we can we can start with this. And uh we can I don't know. Maybe well, put, put a picture of uh of uh <laughs> what's his name? Jack Nicholson when he was in The Shining all for <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the end of the 46 question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Because <laughs> he's got the hat too, you know? Yeah, he's got yeah. that. <laughs> that is hilarious. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh. Crap. Well, I mean, if you guys got well, let's, 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 let's go to the questions quick, then at least. It's not fucking freezing. All right, all right. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, let me see here. All right, we're gonna speed this up because Steve was telling this. Uh, he was talking this good game earlier. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm good. I'm out here in the garage. Now he wiping his nose. You know, he he can't he can't take the pressure. His balls are shriveled up. <laughs> He's got he's got two little bumps in his belly button. <laughs> uh, can you see the can you see the, the heat? Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see it. Oh man! All right, so <laughs> number five top digital skill is SEO. Well, no, you know what? I'm sorry, SEM, which is search engine marketing. So search engine marketing is basically learning how to use SEO, which is search engine optimization and using search engine to using your search engine to actually help you market. Now, of course, you know, that can be done in a number of ways, but I'm going to let you at home take a look at that because like I said, Steve is about to turn into a Steve sickle out there in the garage. So I won't go too much into that one. But I do want to hover over skill number six, which is data visualization. So data visualization is basically taking data and putting it in a visualizing way. So one in one one um, example of this is infographics. You guys know what infographics are, right? Nope. You don't know what infographic is? I don't know. If you go over it, maybe I, I'll recall it. <laughs> <laughs> but you post you post in the infographics all the time in the group chat. Yes. <laughs> the things that people make up online as propaganda. Yes. Oh that okay. Awesome. Infographics. <laughs> 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 that's all it is. It's that's, propaganda. That's the highly educated word. All you guys say is the uh people uh, posting pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's, or, it's 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 graphic, you know, like 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 yeah, you create a graph, you find some data, you make a graph out of it. It's essentially what it is. You know? Yeah basically and you you put it in a visualizing way that helps the viewer understand what it is they're actually looking at so it's like you know if you wanted to take information on how to uh uh what do you call it uh oops sorry hitting stuff here on the computer <laughs> cancel all right sorry i was trying not to cancel the screen here discard you've been canceled <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it takes um, the information from, um, what do you call it? Uh, you just take information and you put it in a, uh, a, a visual way. So let's say you had to do like a chart on uh, how many people, I don't like, I don't know, like sailboats, right? So you would take the information and you would visually create that data in a way that's appeasing to the eye and also engaging for the individual versus just having a bunch of text on the screen. So of course, you know, my new obsession right now with chat GPT three is what if you could create a API that allows you to visually see the data that the AP that, uh, chat GPT jet, chat the frick the ai <laughs> can generate so instead of just generating text maybe you create an application that allows you to see the 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 information displayed visually in front of you right that's a way of creating visual data right like another ex good a very good example right now of visual data is knowing how cold steve is he's rocking back and forth at this point yeah. with his hands it, it, in it, his you pocket. Put, <laughs> you put like three little, like, like three tiny Steve's, <laughs> you know, with, with, with like, all right, this is Steve at his normal temperature is four full Steve's, yeah, right? Four, four, at, four. He's like at his halfway temperature. So there's only two Steve's. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there you go. See? He's halfway dead. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. That that that's it. That 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 that's what we're talking about right there. So that that is that is definitely a way of visual data visualization. So that's number six. All right, we got got four more left, guys. Social media management. Now, this is one I'm not familiar with. However, I do know a guy that knows a guy that does social media management. So basically this skill is learning how to manage social media. And if you're one of these people that understands how social media works, if you're good at Facebook, you're good at Instagram, understanding when people get on what they like, the interest that they're into, you can actually cultivate that skill and grow other people's social media platforms. If you're good at taking information, especially knowing how people operate and you can actually employ yourself as a social media manager for other people. Like that's something I would never do because I don't like being on social media that often, except for viewing videos. I go on YouTube. I watch my YouTube videos. I get off it. I am now starting to learn how to interact. And all three of us are like social media agnostics over here. <laughs> we, we don't really care for it too much. So, but that is a top skill that people are looking for, especially moving forward in 2023. So if you was at home, figure out how to make that work for you. If that's something that you're interested in. So number eight, online course and teaching. Now, that's this is something that anybody can do. Right. We live in a permissionless society right now. If you have access to a video camera, if you have access to the Internet, you have access to many, many skills. Right. And you yourself may have a skill that you're good at. There's something you're good at that nobody that everybody else tells you that you are. And you might be that one person that's good at music like Steve. Steve can literally create a online course and teach people how to play guitar step by step. Dave is phenomenal at AutoCAD. He taught me everything I know about AutoCAD. Steve is good at AutoCAD too, right? You can create a course and teach people how to use AutoCAD. I can teach a course on drawing. Whatever skill you have, you can create a online course and teach people and charge a fee for it. Yes. You don't need permission. You just can't teach people crap. <laughs> you got to make sure it's good. teaching. Well, I mean, you know, they, they, they have teaching licenses that you can get in state. If you want to be really legit, like yeah. when I learned the AutoCAD, uh, I, I went to, it, it was the, this guy taught in the back of his house. He had five computers set up in his garage. And it was five students at a time. It was a three month course, but he was a Florida certified teacher. So, you know, even though it cost me like six, seven hundred dollars back in, you know, 2002, whatever it was. Yeah. You know, I was able to learn and he did what he promised he would do is teach me AutoCAD, you know, and taught That's me in and out everything. Of, you know, which, all of it. Yeah, which is freaking awesome, because I mean, like, how do you how do you like like back then, like how do you get people together? Right, that was two thousand five. What? No, two thousand two. Two thousand two. Yeah. So this yeah, was paper this was word of mouth. Nobody. This was before iPhone. Mm -hmm. You know, think and, of it like that. Think of it like that. Yeah. You know, no. so, they had the corkboard things where you put your telephone number on it and you pull the paper off. Yeah, yeah, that. That's right. <laughs> oh, so. But you You're think about it. People, people a message board people were making money then so there's no excuse now like what is what what would stop you from trying to, to achieve that that? say that again yeah. to, to get that license is not that hard if you are serious about teaching and having us you know if people want to see some mm -hmm. type of credential it's not that hard to get that license true um true. You know, i mean I mean, you know, states vary and whatnot but uh you know it's 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 typically not that hard because with that license, it allows you to go and teach a certain grade level, this or that, you know, and it, it kind of, I think you just need like a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. you know, to come in there and really, you know, and get that, uh, that, that degree, uh, that uh, certification. Mm -hmm. 
but um, yeah, it definitely lends you know more uh, credulity to the the person offering the, that service. <laughs> credulity, and that was pretty good, yeah. there, buddy. Credulity. You, you, Did you? Yeah, man, you you reach down into your text knowledge there. <laughs> I got me some credulity right here, you know. But you know, teaching is actually topic number nine. So if we could just stay on the teaching aspect, right point. I mean, right quick. Uh, so uh, along with online course is teaching, and teaching, like Steve said, if you want to be able to teach in your state. Hey, if you want to be able to qualify, you can go get a state license to teach. However, teaching online doesn't require a license. It requires you to have some sort of trust that you've built up with the audience. You will have to build an audience. You will have to create trust with individuals in order to be able to teach them. And you're going to have to give away a lot of free stuff in order to earn that trust. But unlike you know, being in real life, doing it online, you don't need permission, but you need good quality uh, advice, good quality teaching that you put it out, good quality content, right? And this is something that's really disrupting the education industry right now. More people are learning money-making skills from online courses or teachers than they will ever learn in college. Now, if you're a doctor or a lawyer, please go to college and learn whatever they're teaching you. If you plan on building bridges, please go to college. Don't ask chat GPT how to build a bridge and then go out and try to build it. Please. You're going to scare it. Steve, because Steve is terrified of bridges. <laughs> just, just go and get that education but if you want to learn copywriting if you want to learn video editing you want to learn web design you want to learn some real good quick industry stuff that you can put into practice this month next year find online courses develop a skill you can do that now and it doesn't take you two or three years to earn a certificate. And then you find out that when you get there, everybody's ahead of you because they're actually doing the thing. Because you typically what's happening in education system right now, you have professors that have been teaching 30 plus years about a subject that they've never physically done. Nobody, n nobody ever thought to ask that question in class. Nope. Like, Pretty sure they had to do that to be professors. <laughs> no, no, not in every case. You have a lot of people who have degrees in education that are teaching subjects that but, they have but, never but, done. The college level professorships, you, 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 there's no way you can. Bro, I was uh, watching. I can't, I, you know what? I'll share the video with you, but long story short, it was a college professor that taught business, never owned a business a day in his life. Yeah. But, but <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so, Hey, it, he got permission to do it. He has, he has the education. It, you know what it is? It reminds me of the uh, corporate guy, right? You know, when you work for a corporate company, there's always some guy that is fresh out of school, has no experience in the field, but has all of this book knowledge. And they're trying to tell you how you should do everything like this. And it's like, you, you came from school to this, right? And they go, yeah, yeah. So you, you have no idea how anything works, but the book says to do this. And you're asking me to do something that's completely idiotic and stupid because in the book it sounds good it sounds good on paper but that will never work in real life i've encountered that many times in my field well in construction which you know what we do yes you find that a lot <laughs> yeah you find a lot uh, too much <laughs> yeah too much it's 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 the norm it's, yeah. It's, yeah. well well he's educated but he has no experience <laughs> I know, I know people who went to college to for AutoCAD. I got a degree, I got a certificate. 
hey go ahead and uh make a title block i would like the paper the the, the uh what, what is it the uh, line weight to be this i want the uh, paper spacing to be this i want you to set up the units like that and they go what what you don't know how to do this no they ain't teach you that in school no i learned this from a guy who never even went to school for, for it david David is proficient <laughs> in AutoCAD. Pro and I have no, no certificates, no degrees. No degrees, <laughs> no education. This guy is proficient for one main reason. He loved learning it. And the right. people who have a passion for something will always succeed those who just did it just to get the, the money and the education from it. All right. Last one is coding. Coding. Right. Now. We've began this thing with chat GPT three. We're going to end it on chat GPT three. For some reason, I can't share the screen. I don't know why I can't. I was going to try to pull up some uh, stuff here that talked about coding or how you could do it. Dave looks like he's about to fall into a coma. Steve is about. No, to man, be... I'm hungry. I don't want to eat in front of the camera. <laughs> so he's Rude. Like, Hurry up. Now nah, you. Yeah. <laughs> so long story short. Coding is something that you're going to want to learn going into 2023. Coding is not something to be afraid of. I was afraid of it for the longest of time because it looks like a lot of strings of stuff that you can't possibly tell me how to learn. But now I'm starting to dive into it more, especially because of this whole AI program that's out. And it actually writes code for you as well. You can input code into it and you can actually really learn coding from seeing how it writes code. Now, please, people don't attack me. No, I'm not a coder. I'm not saying that you could learn coding full time, but you can kind of get an idea of how stuff works when you see it performed. And coding is something that you definitely want to invest into an education on because it's literally going to be how everything works. Like web 3.0, people are writing code for NFTs. People are writing code for uh, cryptocurrencies. People are writing code to create smart contracts on the blockchain. If all of those words sound completely foreign to you, uh, good, research it, find out what it is, understand it because in the next five to 10 years, that's all there will be. Everybody is going to be talking about that mainstream geeks, nerds alike. Everybody's going to have some sort of programming knowledge and understanding. So coding is definitely on for me, one of the top three skills that I want to definitely add to my skill set going into 2023. So with that said, guys, we're going to start wrapping up any questions, concerns, any great. I, I, I picked up coding in 2015, mm -hmm. 2015, when I was using the uh, Xcode in, uh, on uh, Mac, mm -hmm. and then they switched it over to Swift, mm -hmm. which was awesome, because they had, uh, I can't remember how the heck the coding was back then, but Swift was so much easier, and it was cool just to problem solve and, and execute a, an application to work, and there was a guy uh, called Geeky Lemon mm -hmm. who would teach you how to make a business application. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool from ground up. He broke it down real simple, but um, again, that all just fell apart. But Chat GPT, I think, would be a great teacher for anybody because um, I think there's only four core functions: the the methods, um, methods, functions, classes, and like boolean commands. You just need to like know a couple little things, I think, just to get the core concept and ask. Chat GPT, how all these other things work, just so you can improve your coding skills if you're a beginner. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I'm going to start doing if I can. Mm -hmm. Going with that, but sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. I was paying attention. Go ahead, Steve. The Dave showed me the first bit of coding, like you know, in front of me. Like you know, I've always kind of known what it is, but I never really dabbled with it. Mm -hmm. And Dave actually showed me the first bit of coding and kind of like you know. Just the way it, it works, you know, mm -hmm. the, the more lingo surrounding it, you know, uh, the, 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 the process of it, you know, what it tries to do, where it tries to, you know, get its information from, just like how it works, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you know, they, 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 they definitely showed me some of the first of that, you know, 
Is that something you plan on dabbling in? But well, see, that's the thing. So before before I worked with you guys, I did uh, in um, I worked in uh, uh, audiovisual uh, companies. So I was uh, an AV engineer, and we did a lot of smart home installations. Uh, you know, um, motorized uh, shades. You know, I did uh, CCTV, access control, all, mm-hmm. all types of low volt stuff. But like, I got into programming some of the uh, the DSPs, the digital signal processors that mm. they use. And you got different inputs, different outputs. And the, But what really struck me was the, the, the program that they use to program. Mm. And there was, there's this company called uh, Crestron that the, the way you program, they're very old school. The way you program that stuff is, you know, lines of code, you got to write it and you pull these blocks in and, you know, it's very... Uh, it's very old school in that sense Mm -hmm. and you have to check your uh, your syntax and all that stuff right when uh when i did the qsc stuff um it wasn't any of that so the the they they had a um i guess an api or or a Mm -hmm. gui right to to basically you're programming the thing from blocks and they kind of made it like drawing with crayons Mm -hmm. is the best way to describe it Mm -hmm. you know Instead of, you know, uh, asking the processor to see, you know, whatever uh, input from whatever display, like this kind of thing, this thing did it all automatically. Yeah. I can see that cat uh, DVT kind of doing that stuff, you know, for fucking everything. I don't know, man. <laughs> it, uh, like, especially That's when you like... think about what uh, this, uh, this girl, uh, that Eileen, whatever, from uh, the FTX uh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Car- you know, the girl, the yeah. Caroline. His girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the the, the girlfriend. Um, you know, she she had said a couple of interesting things in some some interviews that you know, she had done was uh, like, oh, you know, right now you have an idea, and an hour later somebody's got it coded. Yeah, you know, and and she was kind of and to me that kind of it struck me because I didn't think that developments were kind of happening that fast. Yeah, and forgot what you know this might not just be simple phone apps. This might be you know full blown programs. You know, soon. You know, stuff around Windows and Macs and stuff like that. But uh, you know, yeah, I thought that was pretty insane. And you know, hearing what this uh, chat can kind of do, you know, like mm-hmm. these next few years are going to be nuts. Oh yeah, Dave, yeah. you you, yep, you yep, was yep. going to say something? Oh no, no, what he just said there was kind of cool because that's how I I've always loved coding, mm-hmm. but man, the jargon behind it, and because I didn't know anything, it just pissed me off. But how he said that. Within an hour, there could be an app like pumped out. Yes. That's how I am with my drawings. They mm-hmm. give it a day. They will pump them out. Pop, 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 pop. I wish I was like that with coding because I love problem solving and, and just to rip a program, actually build it mm-hmm. would be awesome. Well, I think it's really just, just a good yeah. skill to know. We're all going to have that availability. It's, every, it's everywhere. Yeah. Well, we, we all can have that availability. It's, it's there for us to take advantage of and... Steve, I don't know if you even I doubt you've even created a um an account for this uh chat GPT three. Even my wife is on it. I just heard about it, I think today, whenever Dave sent that link. Uh, yeah. and then I started seeing it on Facebook also. I was like, Chat GPT, Chat GPT. I saw the name, but I didn't, you know, I've been so busy today, I just I didn't even have time to look at it. Well, let me tell you, man. I'm gonna tell you like See, I told Steve Mark. heard about it. Not everybody knows. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you like I told my friend Marcus about it, man. I said, Hey, if you ain't dabbling, you need to pull your dabble out and you need to dabble as much as you possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> you need to dabble till your hand hurts. <laughs> and on that note, everybody, thank you for joining us again. We appreciate each and every one of you guys who views our videos, who's actually liking our videos. We're going to probably skip over the weekend for the Christmas holiday. So Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays to those who don't celebrate Christmas. Either way, we want to say thank you again. Guys, thank you for showing up tonight. I know we've all had some technical difficulties. <laughs> we was definitely moving in imperfect action today, but we got something yeah. done. We got it done. And Steve's uh, all beef patties about to become uh, frozen cakes out there. So uh, we want to thank you. They're going to be toasty and warm. So just fart, you know, get a nice little heat. <laughs> in a minute. Get some heat. Rise up, you know, it might. <laughs> Wafting. <laughs> Wafting heat. But no, 
we want to thank everybody for for viewing our channel come back soon we're in the skill set series and uh we're going to be going over some skills here pretty soon we're actually going to have an international guest who's going to teach us about some things here especially on copywriting so we look forward to seeing you guys again make sure you like and subscribe thank you and good night all right gentlemen. peace out guys Dave, wow. enjoy have your a good food. night steve get warm <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>